Hello, sister. Hello, darling. Hi. <laughs> okay, Romy. Yeah. We're embarking on this cruise. Did you remember your bikini? Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you bring the sunscreen? Uh, of course. What always. SPF? A hundred. Amazing. And twelve. Great. Um, did you bring the Advil? Uh, I thought you had some. Okay. Um, the Imodium. You know I get seasick. Yes. Uh, the Dramamine. Well, the Dramamine's the Dramamine. just for fun. Right. The Modium is for my menstruation. Yes, right. Um, uh, okay. Did you bring the magazines when we're by the pool? Uh, yes. You know, I live for print media. Okay. Fabulous. Um, it will I never think, die. I think we're ready. Okay. Um, we are about to do this. <gasps> And do you remember the intro for our podcast that we're launching? Of course not, darling. Okay, can you? You can do it. Okay. Um, y'all have heard of love, and y'all have heard of boats. This is a love boat podcast. We're going to be serving, giving, generously, altruistically love and boats, and more importantly, a bit of ourselves, a slice of life. Um and an insight into our own, you know, relationship to the pursuit of love and boats. And what's it called? It's called the Talk Ship Get Hip podcast, which is about the love boat. And what's your name? My name is Romy Romack, and I'm not like the other girls. I have about 15 and a half restraining orders going against me. Amazing. In process at the moment. And I'm Blossom Jury, and this is our podcast. Thank you for having us. Ding! On our podcast. <laughs> um, okay, we are launching a podcast. It is 2023. It is okay to launch new podcasts in this year and in this decade. We said it. Um, yes, they have existed for a while, but um, you can teach an old dog a new trick, and we are learning new tricks. Um, in- That's a dark allegory. <laughs> Um, we are maybe new to the world of podcasting, but we are not new to the art form of critiquing. Or talking. Um, reading. Saying things. Watching. Um, and ultimately, talking ship. Exactly. And getting hip. Yeah. Which is what we're all here to do. What you have come to join us in doing. So, welcome. Right. And thank you. We can explain this this name a little bit more. So, of course, we have some some double, maybe even some triple entendres happening here. Um, you know, we're we're intentionally avoiding profanity in the name of our, right. our podcast name, but we are both simultaneously talking ship, as in reviewing the legendary hit TV show, The Love Boat, that had nine seasons, um, about two hundred and fifty episodes, right. that ran from several. The, Movies, several, several movies. feature length uh, <laughs> releases, several stars, um, several plots, and, and of course, several um, very questionable choices um, throughout the series. A which... bevy of problematic guest stars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we're here to embrace it all um, because critiquing isn't just uh, adoring, it's also um, subverting. Yes, and I have always believed. You know, that media, movies, shows that you love are like people. You love them with their flaws. You love them with their issues, with their problems, despite the fact that they've been stalking you for three weeks. You know, you just, you accept it. And that's how we're going to go into this show. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, so, yeah, 250 episodes of a love boat. Uh-huh. Um, therefore, this this does mean that Talk Ship Get Hip does at least have 250 episodes in it. Um, will it just be Romy and I meandering through each episode on our own? Maybe. But, but probably not. Probably We're probably not. going to have a lot of illustrious, colorful, gorgeous, interesting, um, talented question mark guests <laughs> on the show. Talented to be ter- uh, determined by uh, by both who we choose and by their performance on on the show. Um, but we, we, they, they will all be dear loved ones, um, yes, all or, family. or former, former loved ones, former family, former loved ones, uh-huh. depending on how spicy yeah, we want that episode exactly. to be. Um, so, so at least 250 episodes in this, the series, we are, we are here on, on, we've committed. We're on number one of, of potentially many. We're never going to give you up or let you down. 
Um, I'm going to give more facts, more context about the love Please boat. Please do. Romy will respond as, as she's hearing these facts of, for the first time as well. So as Romy mentioned, there are several film adaptations of yeah. the love boat, which are actually kind of the, the precursor. So in 1976, we had the original made for TV movie called The Love Boat. Um, she started it all. She started the it all. The original darling. She threw the first... She cast the first stone. She, she was without sin. She threw the first confetti into the ocean. Yeah. We'll, we'll learn that in each episode of The Love Boat. She they, threw the first blue shell yes. at Stonewall. Yeah. Unfortunately, we'll see that the guests of, of the that embark on the cruise do just throw paper glitter and <clears throat> confetti into the ocean during each No, each they trip. do. They, will, mm-hmm. they pollute the ocean mm-hmm. every, which apparently was like a custom. Right. Like at the beginning of the Titanic, they threw a lot of trash mm. into the ocean, which right. kind of, you know. It is why we have I mean, they um, had it coming, yeah. m- microplastics in our bloodstreams nowadays. It started that way, yeah. Right. So after the 1976 movie, we had The Love Boat 2, the sequel. Electric Boogaloo. Not Electric Boogaloo, but. Love Boat uh, Takes Manhattan. <laughs> just The Love Boat 2. And then after The Love Boat 2, we had the third. And final movie before the TV show launched. Love Boat in Space. No, almost. The the new Love Boat. Um, so that is the trifecta of pre... Love Boat versus Jason. Well, <laughs> that these are all wonderful spinoffs, but not the ones that, that we um, are embracing okay. in what we call the Love Boat cinematic universe. Yes. TM. This is kind of our... That can be our expanded universe. You know, once you kind of learn one cinematic universe, they all kind of blend together. Right. Um, and this is all to say that the movies were also based on a book, um, different name, but similar. This was the book by Geraldine Saunders, who was a cruise director herself uh, um, or themselves. I think, is Geraldine a... I would imagine... A woman. Probably a femme person. Amazing. <laughs> um, but her book was called The Love Boats. A plural. Ah. So all these iterations to say that um, it all brought us to the hit TV show, The Love Boat, which debuted in September You've of 1977. Through, yes. You have to go through all these iterations. A few, a few iterations to get the formula right, like the Crucibles, uh-huh. the Shinings. Yes. Um, plural to singular, yeah. all to lead us in 2023, exactly. where we launch Talk Ship Get Hip. And... Um, It still has relevance today. It does. It does. Because ultimately, the themes by which we live our lives, um, you know, love, uh, bizarre gender dynamics, bizarre social class divide dynamics. Tourism. Tourism. People who are able to go on love boats. I have never been on a cruise in my life. But I know that a lot of people have. And I know that those people... um, Are vile have probably had really nice lives. <laughs> sure. Have immense privilege. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are definitely not here to endorse cruises. Well, there's I don't a, know. we you have an expansive be, understanding I of mean, cruising. I mean, how much money of the Alaskan cruises goes back into like the state of Alaska? I think are they bro- able to keep any animals alive with this cruise money? It probably goes money? into the pockets of one man. It probably does. Um, an Mario. important distinction to make here. So the cruise in the love boat, she has a name. And her name is the SS Pacific Princess. Yeah. Um, I think we both kind of identify as Pacific Princesses in, we, in a way. We are Pacific Princesses. We can jump into a little bit more about like who we are, who who we are grounding ourselves as approaching this That's project. That's a brilliant segue. Brilliant segue. Who are you, my little Pacific Princess? Who, who, who? What can we learn more about my sister, Romy? Um, well, I am an American lady, an American trans lady of, you know, half Mexicana descent, half Caucasity descent, born in San Diego, uh, from OC, from the Southern Californias. And uh, I came up, you know, OC is like a hyper, I mean, like the part of OC that I'm from, especially is like a hyper conservative pocket. So it was a really lit place to be trans in the early to mid zeros. And um, that's my background in general. And that should be enough to explain why everything I say is, is what I'm doing. Yes, that's that's very humble. It's my, context. My sister here is also a stand-up comedian. 
She is pop star working on her debut solo album. She is hair witch, hairstylist to the stars, including myself. True. Um, and she's also a, a drag queen. We're both drag queens. And, and yeah. we share a few intersections here. This this podcast is brought to you by two gorgeous trans femme, trans femalinas of color. True. Um, myself being Filipinx American. Um also a drag queen. We both reside here in, in Portland, Oregon, True. where we celebrate the wonderful local drag scene that we're part of here. Which happens to be the most slept on, most full of talent drag scene of all time. I'm a little biased, but I don't know. Portland has like so much per capita in terms of like interesting characters per person by population square root or whatever. I don't know. Sure. That's a uh, metric. Um, yeah. I didn't, Oregon I didn't also, go to real school yes, entirely. <laughs> also known as the occupied lands of the Kalapuyan people, the mm-hmm. Chinookan people, yeah. um, many indigenous tribes along the um, Multnomah Falls and, and uh, spaces here. We might be adding this part out. But important <laughs> to recognize because as we examine this hit television show that basically uh, rests on the idea of uh, um, tourism. This is something that we have ties to as as people that come from places that are also um, in some ways exploited by tourism. No, it's true. And we can talk about like the, I mean, now that I have the greatest grasp on it myself, but we can talk about the economic hostage situation that is the tourist economy. Yes. So... We're pretty girls that go deep as well. Yeah. Um, okay, continuing on. Continuing on. Uh, we talked about the seasons, how many episodes there are going to be. Let's continue with who... So we've shared a little bit who we are. Let's share a little bit more about the exciting people that we might bring onto the show. As we mentioned, we're part of Suzanne a very... Suzanne Summers. Suzanne Summers. Um, a wonderful guest star in the first episode of season one, who mm-hmm. we will be excitingly talking about um, in our next episode. Um, no, we, well, we could have Suzanne Summers. We could have a celebrity guest, but no, more so than celebrity guests, we will be having our own We'll be local, having other celebrities. Yes, more celebrities, localized. Yeah, celebrities who require personal research. Hmm. And that little bit that you give is going to make it all the more worthwhile because you'll discover uh, a personality that you'll become fixated upon. That's yeah. at least how it works for me. We're talking about people that we perform with on cast um, we're talking local drag stars, local comedians, local artists that are have ties to the drag scene. We we are interested by this idea of hearing other fellow drags um, reactions to the Love Boat cinematic yes. universe. There's a lot to to grapple with as and the parallels between the show and our own pursuit of life, love, and the pursuit of pursuits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, but going back to Suzanne Summers, mm. we can give a little hint at some of the stars we might see in The Love Boat and who we therefore will be chit-chatting about. We're talking about famous stars such as the village people. Yes. Any I, reactions to the village people? I mean, <laughs> I mean, the village people, don't. they have their own movie, which I only saw like recently as yes. of this year. And mm-hmm. we watched it together and oh my God. The village people's like contribution to the world of cinema is actually really understated but yeah village people um obviously as per mentioned suzanne summers <laughs> if we ever get to the last season andy warhol mm-hmm. we have kathy bates in the show we have betty white mm-hmm. i think on multiple occasion do we, we have, have b arthur oh, certainly i believe betty white and b arthur and they probably must be in the same episode i w- well i i don't know but i would hope so i mean b arthur was in the star wars uh special Amazing. Which is kind of on the I thought you were, aesthetic lines as Love Boat. I thought she was in a Star Wars proper. I was like, I don't remember that one. She was, yeah, she was in Empire Strikes Back. I see. Yeah. She's Darth Vader. Yes. Okay. Um, good to mention because, you know, we'll situate the Love Boat in the grander scene of American television at the time, too. That could be fun to talk about, you know, the Golden Girls at the same time. You know, where were they in the ratings? Who, who was uh, coming out on top? 
Maybe. Oh my gosh. Probably not the love boat, but. Oh my gosh. It, it comes out on top in our hearts for sure. I feel as though, I don't know. It's hard to say because like, if you consider like, like the concept of syndication is wild mm. now. If you consider oneself to be like unindoctrinated into the way that old media works. Mm. So it's possible that Love Boat and Love Boat ran for such a long time. I think it was contemporary to Golden Girls maybe, or at least something that like any of them did before that. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. 1977 to 1986. So that's kind of the, the airtime of, of the mm-hmm. Love Boat. Um, just to round out this discussion, we had Vincent Price. Yes. Um, Zsa Zsa Gabor. Zsa Zsa. Um, Janet Jackson comes on eventually. The Temptations. The list <laughs> goes on. A, a very tempting list and star-studded cast that we will be intermingling with our own little exactly. stars and divas of our hearts. Yes. And, you know, we're bringing the perfect confluence of dead people and alive people yes. to this show, which I know you're interested in. Yeah, well, that that is drag, basically. I yeah. feel like drag for me is like a summoning. Of... It's about forty percent dead people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it really is. Uh-huh. More on that later <laughs> in the show. Um, so okay, yeah, we're we're doing a good job of setting this up. Um, Are we though? Yeah. Um, if you're if you're at home watching us right now, if you're at home listening to us, you can watch along with us as we go episode by episode. Um, on Miss Paramount Plus. That's where you can watch The Love Boat currently. Sure. If you're like me and you downloaded it or subscribed to it to watch one of the many, many iterations and hundreds of seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race and forgot you were still subscribed to or it. Or if you're like me and you trust the hosts of whatever media you watch to synopsize everything for you so you don't have to watch it yourself, you can just watch our show, listen to our show even. Mm-hmm. Even think about our show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so watch along with us as, as we embark on this adventure. Yeah, it's going to be real fabulous and real chaotic and several people will die. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back from our break. <laughs> oh, thank you. The girls are breaking. She broke. They reached she broke breaking down point. again. <laughs> breaking yeah. down. That I think that will be a lovely. Bring me one step closer to the edge, and I'm about to break. Yeah, I think that will be a a, a trend throughout the podcast. <laughs> Not breaking down on on camera, but um, processing. I think a podcast is a great place to process. Yeah. Um, what else are you looking forward to in having a podcast, specifically with me, but also maybe just in general? I'm looking forward to like, you know, I'm looking forward to getting the girls a little bit once we especially like have some guests on the show. And I'm looking forward to just experiencing like and glorifying retro television. I watched so much retro TV. I watched all of Are You Afraid of the Dark recently. Uh, You know, it's a different type of retro, but I'm thinking of revisiting Dexter. X-Files, lots of shows. And the idea of watching a show that's already had its moment, especially if it was like decades ago, it's kind of romantic. Absolutely. It's, yeah. When you watch old media, it's 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 amazing to know, enjoy because like sometimes everybody is dead and there's a certain cool moment to that. Another theme emerging from yes. our first episode, episode zero, is... The glorification is, of dead people. Yes, at least from Romeo's perspective. Yeah. Uh, death is something... I mean, death and art go hand in hand. Right. I know for me, drag is very existential. Mm-hmm. Um, so naturally, a podcast led by Romeo and Blossom will be inherently existential. Exactly. And every time you see a great number, you die in their arms tonight. Right. Like right. when we went to Burgerville today, our order was... Total was 36, 36. That, right was a great omen it was i think it was and the fact that like the person who served it to us turned into a gangle of tarantulas and (laughs) scattered away was you know really telling it was really bringing us to just a point of recognizing like all of the magical inferences that are everywhere around us at all times you get it right well this leads me to one of the reasons why (laughs) i'm excited to have a podcast one of my life goals since meeting Romy, since having Romy be my sister, which I guess we can formally explain that like Romy and I are drag sisters. We are drag sisters, yeah. We are united under the house of Hex. Officially. 
by our lovely mother, Violet Hex. Shout out to our, our drag queen mama. One of the most brilliant, cool, fierce women to ever walk this planet. Our drag mother. And future beloved star and guest of our podcast. Absolutely. We <laughs> will we be can having convince her. her to be on the show. Yes, absolutely. We, <laughs> we will reach out to see what her booking fee is. Um, but since meeting Romy about, I guess, honestly, like I, I mean, I, I became your drag sister like last summer, a summer That's ago. That's true. Damn. So, it's been not even a year. Yeah. That's so weird. I feel as though like so much has happened between them. I feel as though that was like four years ago. So to hear that that wasn't even a year is like wild. Although my concept of time has always been like fleeting, wonky, half-baked at best. As it should be. I feel like linear conceptions of time, like that doesn't really resonate with, no, with me. No, that with, doesn't work for us. No, it's That's like... That's not applicable to us. Our, if our podcast is also a vehicle, is a, a mode of transportation, our, our cruise ship is going through the Bermuda Triangle at all times. Of course. Time, space, you know, these are these are fluid things in our It's in giving our Amelia Earhart. <laughs> it's giving Flight 153 or whatever. It's giving a disappeared ship. Right. But it's the love boat. But make it fabulous. Yes, exactly. Um, but make it fabulous, make it fashion. And what boat is more elusive and more lost more often than love right yeah. and so that was all to say that my one of my desires and hopes from this podcast was to get Romy on a microphone that I mean since I met her and since I did know her before I became her sister I was enamored by her her stage presence and prowess on a microphone so I knew I'm like in my heart I'm like I want to be in spaces where I'm on a microphone with this lady. Thank you. That's, and, and here we are. That's very brave of you. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, other things I'm excited about to have um, surrounding this this project, this goal. I mean, it's always exciting as artists to like bring something for, into fruition that we've been hatching, that we've been... She and I have been talking about this for quite some time. Quite now. some time. And, you know, I... I had been thinking about this before I brought you on as well. So for me, even a little bit longer, but yes. together this has happened. And also shout out to our, our producer, um, producer Charlie. Thank you, who, Mr. <laughs> producer Charlie. Andrew. Who is actively uh, helping us manifest this as well. Um, and who's home we're in right now. Um, also real. Yeah. Too. Just an other, <laughs> other exciting um, goals around a podcast. I mean, there's a lot of, it's a playground. It's a place for us to explore, for us to um, hone skills, yes. to grow in real time. Plant the seeds of political and social dissent um, lead up to the assassinations of several prominent social figures and um, fascist ultimately a, a figures yeah abscond from all responsibility once those things shake out after our ultimate uh means our ultimate goals are met yes i mean plausibly <laughs> deniably all jokes yes absolutely yeah. um emphasizing that last part okay uh um mm, question question to me yes okay for you to ask me <laughs> oh oh for, for me to ask you mm. yeah um miss blossom how long have you been a fan of the love boat at what point in your life did the love boat hit you amazing question um i was a tumblr girly of uh, course you were yes that, uh, tum- all 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 beautifully uh all beautiful and aesthetically aware girlies were at that moment in time yeah i mean 2012 through 2016 that's which was when the world ended (laughs) and we're all living in a simulation now when the world ended sorry also when i was in high school um so tumblr was a very like formative place for me to grow like politically in some ways or like (laughs) i don't know a teenager mind I, i think teenagers should have access and also sometimes not access to things like I don't think I should have been driving when I was in high school or when I, I was I don't think 16. anyone should be driving ever. <laughs> that, Honestly, like I don't think anyone should ever have a car. Like cars are the craziest concept. The idea of giving everyone a car, giving everyone their own murderous 
like homicidal vehicle that just like shits out pollution and putting them all on the road like was that ever a sustainable idea i look back on where i'm from being from southern california as we've touched upon and like you know i was i never was presented with the option of not driving a car it was what i did it was what i did from 16 on until i moved here and then i stopped driving but like you know anyway i digress right but cars i mean like if you want to use them as like a tool for revenge murder monster truck showcase yeah, at the state fair i mean exactly but if you're using it to get to point a to b i mean you could just use a broomstick i don't understand right right so cars just like tumblr they can right. be great places they can be great places to start up but once you look around and you see what's around you you think like is this really what i want to be doing right but um as a teenager with access to Tumblr, I was also exposed to a lot of things that led to like my queer awakening. So of course. one of these being the campiness, camp in general. I feel like camp is a wonderful word to describe the love boat. Um, that was an entry point for me. And I, I was exposed to that through the online world of like snippets of like Ethel Merman, like bursting onto the main deck of the cruise ship, just singing with the most, you know, uh, intense vibrato. Um, you know, I'm like, what is happening? Who are these gorgeous ladies in gowns like bursting forth singing into mm -hmm. a cruise ship? I'm like, yeah. this, whatever this is, this is definitely like my gender. And um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, one of my favorite bands of all time, Aqua. Ethel Merman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aqua, they found their singer because she was a cruise ship singer. Amazing. And that's how they that's how they found her. Who's they? The other members of the band? The other members of the band who were the producers slash like principal songwriters of the band. Uh, one of whom ended up marrying Lene, Renee Neustrom, Lene. I don't know. I'm not good at names from this region of the earth. Aqua's that flavor of Europe. Is that like Danish? Danish kind of moment Scandinavian maybe Scandinavian moment yeah the Scandinavia pop scene in the 90s seemed to have been like actually full of a lot of really interesting characters but I digress but um you know seems fruity as a it band was, it was to be way fruity searching for your were they actively searching they found or? their singer I mean they were writing songs they were making beats and they needed a singer and they found her singing on a cruise ship and thank god we would not have we wouldn't have had all of those hits. Barbie. The Bumblebee song. The Bumblebee song. I, Goodbye I mean, to the Circus. Uh, cartoon Heroes. Happy Boys and Happy Girls. Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones. Um, come Lick My Roses. Or maybe that's just a Come a Lick hook. My Roses. He says that, I think. Or maybe it's, it's Come Pick My Roses. Oh. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. Um, no, I love Aqua. That was uh, like one of the let's clean the house on Sunday morning CDs in my household. Oh, my God. Yes. Mine was like with my mother. It was the Bodyguard soundtrack, that as which well. I really uh -huh. feel as though like an entire moment, an entire group. I don't like the term generation, but an entire like grouping of people had their moms be really obsessed with the bodyguard soundtrack and my mom was definitely like on that train yeah whitney houston in general i mean oh yeah and thank god our moms for that absolutely <laughs> that they were obsessed with that yeah it was everything um what's another one i feel like pink's like debut album was like, misunderstood misunderstood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh don't let them get me no what is that song <laughs> i like i liked that album a lot. get the party started Mm -hmm. that's a great one um but yeah amazing cruises bringing bands together cruises bringing podcasts together cruises bringing couples together yes mm -hmm. have you been on a cruise i have never been on a cruise have you no yeah i mean like i don't know in some ways i felt as though like cruises were something that like i don't know people who are like very well to do got to do i never I never imagined, but at the same time, I felt as though, like, I was able to do certain things. I went to the San Diego Wild Animal Park. Amazing. I went to the zoo. I went to Disneyland. So, like, why did I never go on a cruise? There's a Disney cruise. Right. Well, people of a different economic class and, and probably 
also white people. I mean, going yeah. to school, it would be like, okay, oh, Car- yeah. Carly came back from the yeah. trip and she suddenly has like cornrows and yeah, she's and a golden bronze tan. <laughs> and she's, and or she's red. Some she's, jangly she's earrings. Just she's red. She's all burnt. She's sunburnt. And she's burnt house down. <laughs> yeah. She's giving burnt up, darling. <laughs> it's giving crispy. Um, and she has like a puka shell necklace on, mm-hmm. maybe like a turtle shell. I don't even mm-hmm. think that like production of puka shell necklaces happens anymore. I would hope all. not. It probably sounds extremely extractive and exploitative. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah, Cruz is definitely, I was like, yeah, I don't know what's happening there, but that's definitely not something my family would do. Um, and now as adults, I mean, wh- what do we see cruises? We see the Puerto Vallarta cruises with... Um, I mean, there's like the whole gay the cruise gaze. moment yes, yeah, uh-huh. with the circuit gays. I mean, they get to go to Puerto Vallarta. They get to go to... Uh, I don't know. I really want to go to La Paz because I've been watching so much Milf Manor and it's all filmed in La Paz. That La Paz seems like the most beautiful place in the world to me. Right, right. This is another interesting point. You know, we can use not just other media of the era to to contrast with the glorious love boat, but we can see trends um, with with new media, with with current cinematic magic such as tell me the name again Romy Milf Manor Manor. rest in peace Sigmund Freud you would have loved (laughs) Milf Manor um it's the greatest show of all time they have all of these like boxy ladies of a certain age and all of the boys who are the potential like young bucks are all the sons of the other ladies so it's all these mothers like fighting one another and like banging each other's sons it's the greatest show to ever happen. For trans- Other than Love Boat, of course. I, I, I mean, did, we could uh, be doing a podcast about that, but that's like half a season in, and there's just not enough content, darling. No, and I'm sorry, I cannot get behind. I, I did, for transparency, I did attempt to watch I it. I tried episode. to show it to her, and she couldn't handle it. She was like, I can't do this. This is making me sad. Which really just means that you have more of like a soul than I do. It was an interesting kind of sadness. I wasn't, I, I'm not saying I don't. I disagree with love that spans maybe five or six decades, <laughs> but several generations. I uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, this is an interesting conversation. Um, yeah. Like, I mean, if you have a problem with Beetlejuice and Lydia as a couple, which you should, you may have a problem with some of the couples on Milf Manor. Right. Right. Maybe not even just asking. You know about yeah, like types and whatnot, but. If we're framing this, you know, if you were to go like on a romantic cruise, you know, what kind of what kind of situation do you want to have? What's your ideal, um, you know, person accompanying you, people accompanying you? Where's your destination? Oh, my God. Well, I mean, I would love to go down south. I would love to go where the sun still burns. I mean, here in Portland, we're seeing a lot of fallout of climate change, aren't we? We're experiencing a lot of snow at the moment. I looked out the window like just an hour ago or so, and there was some very chunky snow. But anyway, I digress. I'd like to go to someplace warm, someplace with like bright, nuclear, cold looking sun, um, someplace nice and warm. And uh, I don't know, I'm thinking Mexico, La Paz specifically, where yes, they film yes, Manor. Right, yeah. right. Okay. As I mentioned before, I'm very fixated on that part <laughs> yes. of the globe. Right I guess now. I was blocking that out of my mind, being like, <laughs> where, okay, so what celebrity guests are you, what celebrity in your life, celebrities are you bringing with you on a, on a very romantic cruise? Um, let's see. I haven't seen him in probably like 10 to 15 years, but I'm thinking like Scott Russo of Unwritten Law would be fun. The band Unwritten Law. Okay. So follow the leader now. Okay. They had that song. Yeah. I was I was naturally thinking of a band people for you. I was thinking of a certain um, Chino Moreno. Mm. Who? I mean, Chino, if I had my druthers, would be. I mean, I have a strong feeling he isn't listening now, but if he is, he Chino? has a he has a very strong chance with me. If you're listening, give us a follow. <laughs> give my sister a chance. <laughs> the music that you two would make with each other. It would be so... We could write really great songs Absolutely. together. Absolutely. Yeah. Music... Song making of different varieties, I imagine. <laughs> um, amazing. Um, don't ask me the question because I don't really have a great answer. I, 
I'm, yeah. If you, yeah, I mean, if you had your druthers, it's like, I mean, what kind of question is that? Like, anyone, if you were to able, you know, to talk to anyone for okay, the show, so like, she who could it be? Okay, so don't like my question. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just expanding upon it. Right, like, right. Like, living or dead, mm-hmm. fake or real. Joan Crawford. Okay, work. Like, real Joan Crawford or fake Joan Crawford? Real Joan Crawford. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we would just sit by the poolside and read bitches up and down. I would always be, I will always beat you. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I'm coming out as Joan Crawford sexual and also I think actually I meant to say she kind of was everything I meant to say Joan Rivers I was thinking of Joan Rivers this whole time I was speaking you were just thinking ultimate mommy with a Joan yeah no this is I did this yesterday where I where we were talking about who's the lady in Sound of the Sound of Music Judy Julie Andrews Julie Andrews Andrews, that's Julie Andrews and I said Dame Judy Dench. Dame Judy Dench. I get names mixed up, okay? They're ladies. similar. These white ladies, they all yes. they blend in a little, okay? Sure, um, sure, sure. Especially, so I, I mean, it's when you're going back that far, too. Yeah. Joan Crawford, maybe she was. I don't think Joan Crawford or Joan Rivers were guests on the love boat, but. No, um, and I don't know that either of them ever really sang. <laughs> Julie Andrews sang. Julie Andrews sang, yeah. <laughs> um, anywho, I would bring any of these ladies with me on a romantic <laughs> cruise. Um, Mother, it's giving, it's giving grandmother. It's giving mommy issues. I actually have a, well, yeah, I have a relationship with my mom. We all have a relationship with everything. I have sort of a relationship with my mom my mom's been gone a long time and uh i don't know i would probably say that of everyone i know i have like the least healthy relationship with my mother which is pretty lit honestly like i'm kind of proud sure i mean (laughs) it probably meant that you've had to mother yourself a lot she's slash except the mothering from everyone around me (laughs) (laughs) this is the two ways of looking at it yeah right Okay. Um, new topic. New topic. Um, what else are uh, do you are you excited to do this with me? Are you do you of feel committed? Of course I'm excited. Okay. Of course I'm committed. I'm, okay. I plan on doing this for the whole ass rest of the year, at the very least. <laughs> and I'm very excited to do she so. She said, "Honey, I have a hard out. 2024 of it. I'm, I'm done with this." 2024. I mean, I don't even know if I plan on living that long. Oh, no, yes, you do. <laughs> We're gonna try. We're gonna go on like a celebratory cruise. <laughs> And by cruise, I mean maybe we'll go whale watching on the coast. Oh my god, whale watching would make me so happy. Sure. We could just go bear watching. Just go to the eagle. Sure. Animals. Bears, eagles, and whales, oh my. Oh my. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm excited to do this with you too. Yes. <laughs> Likewise. I mean, if you die in nature, you die in real life. I heard that once. Is that kind of like when a tree falls... In the forest. When no one's onto there? Onto someone, yeah. Did but, it really happen? Uh, yeah. The person, the victim, the person who died was the bottom. And the tree uh, was the power parent. It's really hard to gender trees right i was following i think yeah, trees you. in general you, you get it i think trees in general run top i think so too they run top but they also run kind of femme they're like femme top oh yeah it's giving tree. i mean trees don't really give father to me trees give mother for sure what about the trees in the lord of the rings the ones that walk around and throw stuff oh yeah well that's like that's like a whole different interpretation right yeah from the cis het petter hetero <laughs> yeah uh patriarchal. i mean i have a feeling like tolkien would have i don't know tolkien would have probably been like kind of problematic today if he were still alive he would have like probably i don't know you know that like one weird image of kyle rittenhouse where he looks like all like blushy and like no jolly. i don't know and i don't want to i don't want to summon this energy into our okay our i'm sorry podcast. okay so tolkien to me gives me like not that energy but like i don't know you know how like you watch back to the future and you feel like doc today would have been into some like pretty sketchy shit mm. That's the energy I'm talking about. Sure. Yeah. I mean, 
that was a long time ago when he wrote those. I would, yeah, true, true, true. But I mean, I wouldn't trust Doc Lundgren today. If you were to come up to me and tell me that he was going to take me back to the future, would you would you go with him? Would you go with this man? Would you go back to the future? Okay. Would you go back to the past? Maybe. Wait, with I'm, this man. Is he the one that's in Bloodsport? Bloodsport? No. <laughs> Bloodsport, that's Jean-Claude and the Kumite. Okay, back to the future. The that, Kumite that's the old guy. Is, is, is the death, is the death uh, tournament that, like, I always thought, like, I would, like, serve so hard in the kumite i always i i watched that i I've was in love with jean claude and i thought about was, the kumite wasn't his name dolph too he seems like a dolph he does look like a dolph and he was in this like kind of like weird like the weird romance in that movie in Bloodsport one was really between him and this like large american guy and the woman there was more or less kind of like a fill-in so we're that was a weird movie we're doing a queer reading of Bloodsport. It, oh my god Bloodsport was like i mean they any hetero packaging they added to that movie was done like very much after the fact right which this it brings up a wonderful theme for us to to circle back and introduce that ultimately we are looking at the love boat uh, through a queer lens we, we're looking at the love boat through an extremely hetero cis patriarchal lens clearly right as people <laughs> as as we are right sure um uh-huh. is it projecting maybe but no we we are examining it through a lens that we want to see that but you know there there are signs along the way there's there's lots of um eroticism within the love boat sure. itself and Specifically, homoeroticism. Oh, there's quite a lot of homoeroticism. In the there's world, but... there's camp abound. There's drama. There's fashion. There's melodrama. Yes. Um, romance. Overarching storyline. Tragedy. Um, heartbreak. Yes. Um, heart nurture. What's the opposite of heartbreak? Heartburn. Heartburn. Um, and uh, just this drama and, and queerness abound, truly. Everywhere. Um, there's performance. There's, yes. there's levels of performance in this. Um, it's just, it's a great, it's a great piece Suzanne of... Suzanne Summers kills several people. <laughs> no, okay, fine. We, we haven't, for clarity, for transparency, Romy and I, and I have not seen every single episode. We have Joan not... Rivers eats the heart of... A child. I don't know if we were sure if she was in any episode. <laughs> she, she was just someone I wanted to go on a cruise with. Sure. But, uh, sure, there's 250 episodes we have seen collectively, I mean, a, a fraction of that. So we will be yes. experiencing in real time. What real time reaction to the scene in Love Boat where B. Arthur is drinking a martini and the garnish of the martini is three human eyeballs with a skewer like through them and she's like laughing at the human suffering that brought her this delicious cocktail right vincent price is a guest on yes the, the show so similar vibe this is if he had his druthers as my sister says that is probably what we would be getting on the love boat but if that's your experience watching this show then that's your experience we had it coming the girl had it coming she had it coming she did it to her damn self <laughs> um that's what you can expect from the original content, the original source, what you can accept from our podcast reviewing this content, engaging with it, experiencing it with you is is just jubilance, is um, ecstasy and, and bringing back life into this, this yes. series, bringing people that we care about into this series. We're, we're bringing people into the fold of like, of something that we think deserves a platform and we we are the girls to 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 bring life into that platform as well yes to take you there and wish you had never listened mm. please subscribe and then wish you had never subscribed sure my, my sister this, okay uh yeah we can rattle off the things now um you can find us online on instagram at talk ship get hip true um you can email us any questions if you would like us to read and respond maybe answer or give some advice if you think that we're qualified advice quandary uh personal takes 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, selfies we could offer um, our eye on our, our critical artistic eye on on composition of your selfie true. Um, that's, you can... that's an interesting service to offer uh-huh. but that's true we could do that but we're mostly here to give you yeah advice on your own uh, personal romantic pursuits as we are most qualified to do that right Yes, I have. Yes, I have t- tons of that. Um, you can email us at talkshipgethip at gmail.com. Um, you can find us online at our respective profiles. And we are so excited for, for you to join us on this adventure, to embark on this cruise with us. Ships ahoy. Ships ahoy. Um, ahoy, mateys. Oh. Are ye blast? Are ye blast? Abandon all hope, all ye who enter here. And touch this booty, darling. Yes, pirate, darling. Pirate booty. Pirate from Trader Joe's. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>